This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Two guys I love spending Sunday nights with. All right. Yes. Well, it is a wonderful Sunday night because we have in George's gorgeous trillion dollar studio, uh, two <laughs> blocks from the ocean, probably a voice that we grew up with. And I, I think that's actually the title of her biography. This is a voice we just recognize, we know, especially those of us who are a little older, maybe baby boomers. Remember Rocky and Bullwinkle? Let's just get it over with. Let's welcome to our program, East West Audio Body Shop. Let's welcome June Foray. June, welcome to our show. Well, thank you so much for there inviting she is. me. Very nice of you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and we're so glad that you could join us for our 50th episode. You know, I'm, how many episodes did, did, did you guys do of Rocky and Bullwinkle? See, I can't remember how many, but I know we started in, um, from 59 to 61 on ABC, and then we went from ABC to NBC from 61 to 64. So, <laughs> what? A couple of thousand episodes? I don't know. <laughs> wow. But it was so much fun doing it. Oh. Oh, I'm sure, and I probably have every episode memorized. You know, I can, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I hear Bill Scott in my in my my mind all the time. Hey, Rock, let me pull a rocket out of my hat. You know, it's yeah, it's, but it's, that it's, trick never works. <laughs> <laughs> this time for sure. Anyway, um, see, it's it's just it's part of our psyches. So we just, just keep going. Yeah. We, I mean, it's, we could go on forever. But oh, yeah. um, I mean, I, I, we were talking earlier. There was there was a show that you guys did that, that you worked did with Jay Ward and Hans Conried every Saturday night. I remember my grandmother would come over, my parents would go out, and we would watch this show called Fractured Flickers. Anyone remember Fractured Flickers? It was it had such an input on my psyche of what's funny and why it's funny. And you were part of that. Tell us a little bit about that show, uh, because I mean, we'll talk about Rocky and Bullwinkle, but I want to hear more about Fractured Flickers and what 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 that involved doing. Well, the thing is, Jay Ward loved silent films. And so he thought he could take some silent films and write another uh, a theme for it. So um, the first one I think we ever did was the uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. and um, With Lon Chaney Sr. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Lon Chaney Jr. was furious because we were making fun of his father. Oh, man. And, and so he was going to sue Jay Ward. And J Jay said, go ahead and sue me. I need the publicity. But he never did. He never did, so. <laughs> he sounds like he was an interesting guy to work with. Jay? Yeah. Oh, he was, he was a brilliant guy. Always laughing. Always had a heck of a sense of humor. But he didn't write any of it. Um, all the Bullwinkle segments were written by Bill Scott, who was the voice of Bullwinkle. And then other writers wrote... Uh, uh, fractured fairy tales and right. Dudley Do Right and so forth. Yeah, and and you worked with some amazing people. I mean, those of us who remember some of these classic voices, you know, people like, of course, Mel Blanc and Dawes Butler and Stan Freeberg, but you also worked with with Hans Conried, one of my all time favorites, and William Conrad and uh, Paul uh, Freeze. Paul Freeze, who was uh, wonderful. It, yeah, it, Edward Everett Horton. Yes. Uh, oh, what a wonder! What a wonderful voice he had. I mean, and they these voices that were just classic voices from the 60s and you know those of us who grew up in the 60s it's just it's the soundtrack of our lives i guess people in the really. uh, chat room are talking about when they hear your voice it's like it, they're like transported back to watching tv and I eating know. frosted flakes <laughs> <laughs> or tricks exactly. well it was so much fun doing it it was like having a party every time we recorded recording was just incidental <laughs> but Edward Everett Horton, he was so great, and uh, uh, he never drove. He always had somebody drive him, but uh, he was marvelous. He'd pick up a script that he had never seen before, and 
We'd read it once through, and he was marvelous. And then he'd say, well, I got to go play tennis. <laughs> and so that's what he would do. And he had a marvelous home. He invited all of us for Christmas one day. Unfortunately, they pulled down the home. It was uh, so gorgeous. It it had three stories, and every every landing was like an old uh, a, a motion picture camera or something. You oh, know, there's collectibles was, and yes, yeah, memorabilia yeah. everywhere. Oh, it was wonderful. Oh, wow. Yeah. One of the things we wanted to talk about is because, you know, you worked with all these great people. Right. What's it really, what's it like working as an ensemble cast with these types of people? I mean, this is, it was, it was like the, the best and the brightest in Hollywood doing these things. What was it like in the studio? Did you guys actually like sit and work in the same studio or was it individual takes or, or what? Or did it depend on the production? Well, then it's different now. But then when we did the Bullwinkle show, uh, uh, all the Smurfs, then all of the series, it was ensemble. And we loved it. And it was easy because you work against another actor and, and you know what's coming up. But now, unfortunately, but most of us know how to do it. But uh, we are single now. I know I'm I'm granny, you know. I started as granny in Warner Brothers. And um, so I'm still doing granny on Looney Tunes. But you know what? We all have come at a different time. Say They call me and say, well, can you be here at 2? So at 2.15, maybe I'd finish my lines and then somebody else would come in. And so you don't have that wonderful ensemble feeling of working with everybody all at once. And I think you give a better performance. Oh, I would think. But I, I can imagine there were an awful lot of cut-ups in there where you'd come into some, some sort of a line and you couldn't continue for a while. Did that happen much? I, although I'm sure you were all very professional. but <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> We never had any problems. But the only time we really had any problem is if we laughed or, right, right. or, or went over time. That's the only problem we ever had. How many takes did you have to retake because you just somebody just lost it and they just couldn't stop laughing? I mean, did that happen a lot? or Not too much not too because often. we were very serious about it. Sure, but, of course. But we'd come to work and we'd tell jokes. Bill Conrad and Paul were always joking, each, you know, knocking each other and insulting each other but they were yeah. wonderful friends it was like going to a party and recording was just incidental and uh, we read it through and never did it again unless we were two minutes over time and uh, it was wonderful and that's the way it really was with uh, the Smurfs and all the other series DuckTales and everything they're all professional people who have worked in the industry for so long. And so it, it was very simple. You read it once over the table and do it. And that was it. Mm. Where, where, did, where did the voices come from? I mean, we've, I'm, a lot of us have taken you know, seminars on doing animation voices. Where, how do you create a voice? Well, my mother and father were uh, very intelligent people they take us to plays and they take us to the movies and to the all kinds of entertainment things operas and when i was six years old i told them i wanted to be an actor because i could mimic them all i would listen to some of the the voice or the the actual actors and i would impersonate them and um, so when I was 12 years old, I worked in radio, WBZ, in Springfield, Mass. And that was, uh, it was the subsidiary of WBZ oh. in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I just did a couple of shows when I was 12. When I was 15, I had the hubris to call the, the station manager and say, look, I can do all these voices. Would you let me be on every week? And they consented to it. And that's how I started radio. Ah, chutzpah does it every time. 
<laughs> Whatever it is. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's I, it's it's an amazing. It is somebody was saying it's an innate skill to be able to to do mimicry and stuff. But now everybody is mimicking you. You know the voices. <laughs> the, the, the ones the ones you had were just so unique and and so recognizable. And uh, you know, there's the, is is there a technique? Is I mean, is it just acting, or were you drawing from something else and then just adjusting to it? I mean, like how was Nell different from Natasha? I mean, here's two very different characters, but you would never tell that you were doing both of those. Well, you know, you have to be born an actor. I yeah. don't think you can teach. I taught voiceovers at USC for seven semesters oh. and and my students would come to me and say hey June listen and they would go through wonderful voices terrific but to get copy in front of them and they couldn't act mm. I think it has to be inherent you have to be born with a certain ability to do it yeah as as Gypsy says in Gypsy or as, as Rose says in Gypsy you either got it or you don't you're absolutely right. Yeah, you can stare or it ain't. Well, are That's you true. are you are you still getting out and driving yourself to the jobs? Uh, I don't drive much anymore because mm -hmm. I had an accident, a very small accident. Yeah, nobody hurt. Hit a parked car and oh. they took my license away. I oh. had a beautiful Jaguar, and oh. um, my license is. Continuing till thirteen, but two thousand thirteen. Yeah, they looked at my age and said, "Forget about it." So, <laughs> how did you get here today? So I hire somebody to did, drive me. How, how did you come here today? My friend Rachel took me. Rachel is wonderful. Rachel was one of my students, right? That's right. Rachel Ehrenberg. Rachel Ehrenberg. Yes. Tell she is with us tonight too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. June was um, my vo first voiceover teacher at USC back in 1981. We used to meet over at uh, the uh, original uh, Animation Guild Hall, and uh, one of the things that she's speaking about with the uh, innate acting, the ability to act. <clears throat> there were three of us in the class who she personally liked. I was honored to be one of them. And she invited her agent, Don Pitts, to come and hear us and whatever. Yeah. And one day, June turns to me and she says, you know, Rachel, you do my voices almost as well as I do. Stop it. <laughs> You're not allowed to do anything that I do until I'm gone and I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and the living proof is she hasn't gone anywhere and uh, still working all the time. As a matter of fact, June was just nominated for an Emmy Award, Daytime Emmy Award, for the Garfield show playing ah. Mrs. Cauldron. Mrs. Cauldron, the witch. <laughs> 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 you know, Mark of the Near, uh, who is a wonderful writer and director and producer, and uh, he hires me for Garfield. He helped me write my autobiography. Right. I wrote a lot of it, but he put it together, and he's wonderful. And uh, Mark called me to, to tell me that. But he said, because he does the casting of his show, he gets so many cassettes from women who say, I can do what June Foray can do. He said, he always says, I send a letter back or call him and say, why should I hire you when I can call June Foray? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a funny thing happened. Uh, when I was doing the Smurfs for Hanna-Barbera, uh, it was, uh, oh, I was on every week doing different voices, but mostly jokey Smurf. Mm -hmm. So Gordon Hunt was the director. And Gordon one day said, June, would you audition for Mother Nature? I said, audition? I do the show every week, and I double all the time on all the shows that I do. Why do I have to? He said, Joe Barbera wants it. So I, I heard from an animator who worked at Hanna-Barbera. Joe listened to the first clip, and he said, 
too much like June Foray. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to the second clip, June Foray. He listened to the third one. He said, now that's the one I want. And it was June Foray. <laughs> that's so, so I did Mother Nature. I knew that they would probably try to do something like Granny, you know, for Mother Nature, an older, nicer lady. But I thought about it and said, I'm not going to do that. So I made her kind of a, a, a crazy old lady, you know, <laughs> yeah, that kind of a, a nut. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what he liked. I did it. For the, so, vo for the voiceover uh, people who are watching, um, some of whom do animation all the time, most who don't, the one thing that June taught me about animation beyond anything else was to be yourself was to be genuine. It would never pays to try and if, to be a, a character that you innate, innately can't do. Mm. Forcing it never works. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. You have to learn to accept it. It took me a very long time to accept rejection, oh, man. which is, you know, uh, our you know, a third part of the job, you know, the biz, third, yeah. more than a third, but I mean, uh, you know, most of the things we auditioned for, we don't get. So once I got through that, then I had to stop and remember, just be yourself mm. and just do what you can do. Don't force it. If you force it, they'll know it instantly. Yeah. I, I also right. heard that if you, if you start a series, you know, if you create a voice and that voice is really difficult to do like if it's physically difficult that's a bad idea because what if you now get the job first of all and now you have to do that voice for 30 you know 25 30 years like the simpsons right you, you oh, better geez, make yeah. sure you're doing voices that are within your you know comfortable enough for you to do well the thing is even if you do a crazy voice like uh you know the witch which hazel <laughs> you know there's a voice that it's got to be natural. Mm. You, you, whether it's a funny voice or not, it's a it's a creature that speaks naturally in right. his or her voice. Mm. Fascinating. Well, we got, well, we got some questions here from our our chat room audience here. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's talking about how what they were eating on Saturday morning here. Uh, <laughs> let's see, lots, lots of frosted flakes here. Um, well, let's Actually, see there was here. one that uh, Pat uh, Pat's voice said. Uh, yeah, uh, Pat Sweeney. He yeah, said, uh, is, "Is June? Are you officially retired, or are you still no, working?" No, I know you're out there working, right? Oh, no, <laughs> I, I, I'm still doing Granny on Looney Tunes, yeah. and I'm also doing. Mrs. Cauldron, the witch on the Garfield show. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm working June fifth and sixth <laughs> as Mrs. Cauldron. That's where. Where do you go to? Uh, where Where is the studio that you go for those Buzzies. jobs? Buzzies. Buzzies. Oh, okay. Oh gosh. I've been there. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. They've been, as far as I can remember, I started working at Buzzies. Oh really? Many God, thirty five, forty years ago. They oh, were wow. there. I didn't oh, know they yeah. were on that long. And they're still there. Oh, yeah. I've been there recently. The, the, oh, have the, you? The owner really prides himself in quality. You know, Andy? just Yeah, Andy. Really prides himself in having the quietest, best-sounding studios and just... It must be a really nice place to go and work. Oh, it's wonderful. As a matter of fact, I took Andy Saturday night to the... No, Friday night to the uh, Magic Castle for dinner. Oh. <laughs> I owe him. Because, oh. you know, I, I wrote Lady Make Believe, all the children's stories, and um, I, I wanted the original that I did because I had, um, I had somebody do music to it. And if I, if I wanted to put it out for sale, I don't want to have to pay the musician. Oh. So, yeah. so I, I went you. to Andy, and Andy did it for me for nothing. He said, oh. you recorded here. He's terrific. That's great. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a consummate professional. Yeah. And a total geek, too, kind of like me. He <laughs> loves the... T he's a real nuts and bolts screwdriver wiring... Oh, yeah. ...perfectionist oh, kind of yeah. guy. <laughs> he really... 
He yeah. takes it to another level. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tom has a question here. He says, uh, "What? What was the most? I bet you get this one all the time. But what was the most challenging voice you ever did?" Gee, I don't think I've ever worried about it. I don't think I've ever had any anything. If people say do this, I do it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, you know, um, the first time I worked for uh, Chuck Jones at Warner Brothers, everybody knows who Chuck Jones was, but I didn't. I was just starting in the in doing voices for cartoons, and I was working for Disney, and I did the Witch Witch Hazel, right, for Disney. Besides playing. Goofy's wife, you know, in that crazy voice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway. You're, you're activating all these fuzzy <laughs> memories here. But my agent called and he said, how would you like to work at Warner Brothers? And I said, I'd love it. Yeah. I said, I've heard of Bugs Bunny, but I don't know anybody else. He said, well, you're going to meet Chuck Jones. And I said, Chuck who? I didn't know who Chuck Jones was. Mm -hmm. and, but Chuck. Would, and everything he ever did after that. But I did Witch Hazel for him with the hairpins flying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't have the nerve to say, how do you have the hubris to do Witch Hazel? The same woman that, you know, the same voice, almost the same voice. But I didn't ask him. And Mark Davis later told me Mark Davis was a famous animator. Mm -hmm. I said, how in the world could you use Witch Hazel, the name, because it's a it's an alcoholic rub or something. <laughs> yeah, and, it's a cleaning agent, yeah. Yeah, and he told me that the nurse at the studio, her name was Hazel, and so they wanted to, to make fun of her and, oh, and do okay. it. So they called her Witch Hazel. That's where it came from. All right. <laughs> but I never worked for Disney again. No kidding. No, he was very angry. Wow. Well. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't until after he died when I did DuckTales and things like yeah, that. Yeah. June has a great story in her book. Um, it's Her book is actually called Did You Grow Up With Me Too? And it's available at uh, Amazon and I'm sure any place online did you grow up with me too by june foray mark evanier and the late uh, earl oh, uh, Cress. yeah yeah um in there she talks about the time and june you'll remember this one when you were the stand-in for the mermaid at oh, disney yeah. and they put june in a mermaid's costume to either rotoscope it or to draw the oh, image. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, which do you know what film that was? Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Yeah. So uh, that is actually June for a physically, in that uh, is they the mermaid. Me. Yeah. yeah. In the, in Peter Pan. Well, now I can ask you a technical question. What does it mean? What is rotoscoping? What does that mean? Well, essentially, that's uh, well, the, uh, to make it extremely simple. It's yeah. tracing, mm -hmm. frame by frame. You no, know, yeah, but basically, you take the uh, image. That's of course now with uh, computers, you can do it a lot faster. But yeah. essentially, it was taking a a, a a cell and drawing to the picture that's already been filmed. Right. Um, some films uh, that are done uh, motion capture. Today right. they'll shoot the entire picture, yeah, and then that uh, I'm, that I'm more familiar with because that's yeah, more modern. Right, and I've seen right. that. You know, I've seen motion pictures. capture basically is the computer modern version of what rotoscoping was at the time. Right, got it. Um, and then of course Disney uh, started the multiplane cameras, right, so that it had depth where the original cartoons were very flat. Flat, yeah, two dimensional, yeah, yeah. Right, but the one thing is that uh, you can take. Any of the um, animation that June did from uh, A Witch's Tangled Hair, which was 1956, which was her first job with um, Chuck Jones and Mel. Broomstick and, Bunny was the first one. I'm sorry, Broomstick, Broomstick Bunny. You're right. right. Oh, yes. A <laughs> and, classic. And, um, and all of those. And they actually stand up perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. 
And one of my uh, things in, in the work that I do, both as a performer and also as a creator of animation myself, is to try to have stories that stand up on their own. Right. Because um, even though there's a market for the anime style, for the video game style that a lot of Saturday morning cartoons have become, the shows that people talk about around the water cooler, Family Guy, which June has been in, mm-hmm. and The Simpsons and all of these shows, they stand up. Yeah. Nobody particularly wants to see three weeks ago's Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And that's a discussion that June and I have had many, many <laughs> times on car rides where we discuss the fact that both of us love the idea of keeping the integrity of the uh, work, of keeping um, a tradition alive. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's the directors, really. Yeah. Now, when I work for Chuck or Walter Lance or Tex Avery or Disney, nobody ever directed me because they directed themselves. They knew if they called me yeah. that I could do what they wanted because when I first did Broomstick Bunny, I read the line and I said to, to uh, Chuck Jones, I said, don't you want me to read another one for protection? No, that was fine. And Walter Lutz. <laughs> they knew what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. They knew what they wanted, and it was all in the casting. They yes. knew they had the right person in the chair in front of the microphone, and they could trust you. Right. That's I. I, I used to get to. I got to work with Don LaFontaine, the promo uh, announcer, trailer actor, and even in his later years, even though it was Don and people hired him for Don. They would still have him take things over and over, you know, for for safety or th- it was a really, really young director. So the director wasn't really sure he wanted to cover his bases, you know, and Don would, Don would pretty much read it the same way the second time and the third time. <laughs> you get the idea, you know, and uh, nothing like uh, pe- directors that know what they want and know that they've got the right person to do the job, you know, right. let this let you do your do your job. Right. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. How how has the business changed, you know, for you over the years? I mean, you, I mean, obviously you've been doing it the same way, all, you know, you know, coming into the studio and working with people, but how have you seen the business change aside from the technology? How has how has the how it's cast and all that stuff? How have you seen any major changes over your career? Well, in the first place, I know all of the animators. And, that helps. And if it is hand drawn, as Looney Tunes is, there's a little bit of difference in the drawing now. And mostly now, it's 3D. Mm. Uh, when I did I Taught I Taught Putty Tat, that was shown in the theaters, Mel Blanc had recorded this song in 1951 or 52. And of course, I was granny in it. But that was 3D, and it was not hand-drawn. Mm. It was CGI, and so much of it is. And a lot of the animators are out of work, and I feel so bad for them because they're such great actors. Uh, uh, per- well, they're performing, really, <laughs> with their pencils, uh, but they're out of work, yeah. and it's just uh, it's kind of a shame. Or it's going overseas. A lot of yeah. the animating work is going overseas too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is unfortunate, but it always has. Sure. For a while, uh, I know I was working at Filmation doing a couple of series, but uh, Lou Scheimer, who is the head, mm-hmm. he didn't want. He didn't go to Japan or Korea, and he said, "I want to keep the animators here." And he was wonderful about that. Wow. That's, there's some pride in that, for yeah. sure. You'd, you'd know best, uh, he managed she from that era. Oh, okay. From Filmation. And their, their studio was up on Sherman Way in San Fernando Valley. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Lindley Avenue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. my house, the first house that I ever bought was there before Filmation came in. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, well, I, there's a couple more we'll fire off for you before we let you go. I so there's, there's they're streaming in actually. The <laughs> chat room is like really active. Um, do you get to improvise ever? I mean, I know you create the character, but you really do you really stick to the script no, always? No, mm -hmm. never changed anything. You know, the scripts are so well written that you wouldn't dare. The only time I ever changed anything in the Rock and Bullwinkle was I'd say, hokey smoke, you know. But other than that, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. Everything was so well written and timed perfectly so you don't improvise. You just had a huge respect for the script writers and the Some, process. And I, I've always been a great grammarian. If there is something was wrong, like one of the times they made a plural out of handful of roses are and i said no it's a handful of roses is a handful is singular right referring to handful yes. right right and so that's the only time I ever corrected anybody and they <laughs> took it june actually yeah but as part of her class was she went through a bunch of words uh that were commonly mispronounced <clears throat> one that sticks in my head for all of the voiceover actors out there is coupon and coupon. It's not ah, a, yes. it's not a coupon. Right, it's right. It's a coupon. A coupon. coupon. Yep. And uh, that was one of the first ones that I remember her teaching, and then there was a few others. There are some words that are totally incorrect, but have become part of modern speech. That you might there's no fighting it anymore. Like what? Oh, minuscule. Oh, really? It's actually minuscule. It's minuscule. Is it really? I wouldn't okay, know what you were go. saying. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I remember uh, June taught, teaching that one, and I went, to, uh, I went to a friend of mine and asked him if he had ever heard it spoken that way, and he hadn't because it had just gotten, uh, you know, changed over time. One that's much more popular culture would be definitely right. be nuclear yeah. versus nuclear. Yeah. You know, that's right. that's right. <laughs> that one's so for one. for um you want to impress people is you know, I don't think that I, I don't know how a client would take it, but if somebody said coupon, I just don't it it, it bothers me. Yeah. And it would bother me to say it. I wouldn't yeah. want someone to direct me and say, Oh yeah, say coupon, but it's coupon. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's Things a tough like that. line I have to cross yeah. sometimes. Well, yeah. <laughs> animation has been such a wonderful part of my life that I started the Annie Awards. Did you know that? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was I was president of a CIFA Hollywood. I created a CIFA Hollywood. It was just called a CIFA West. There were only a few people who belonged. Oh. You know, some of the animators yeah but they didn't do anything they would just meet for dinner or something mm -hmm. but then i started a sifa wet uh sifa hollywood oh and that's when i i thought gee they've got the they've got the oscars they've got the tonys they've right. got the emmys and nothing for animation so that's yeah. when i started the Emmy awards and now you. they're quite big yeah, I'm they're sure, I'm sure they are. They get are they getting televised? I think they're getting televised now. Uh, they did their first online stream. Oh, cool! This year, good. Well, this year. And, it, and it was all animated. The you know the <laughs> extra presentations were animated. And see, if you would th you would think of, of what would be what would be better TV than watching the actual people who do those voices on camera? You know, at least getting to accept. I mean, I would think that would everybody would want to see that. Sure. Well, it, it is fun. Uh, you can wear jeans or whatever you don't have to dress yeah. up yeah. and uh it, it's just a lot of fun oh do. man it does sound yeah. great did you ever work yeah. with somebody named paul winchell yes okay because somebody said hey i wonder if she ever worked with my yes, uncle I did. somebody said it was somebody in our chat room says his yeah. uncle uh, george you know who paul winchell is I, I, the name rings a bell oh yeah it was uh <laughs> yeah he was he was a ventriloquist, he ventriloquist oh, yeah but he was yes. also gargamel in yeah. uh the original oh. smurfs Right. Oh. Yeah, he was Gargamel. Yeah, and also um, Tigger. Th Tigger, right? Yeah, that's who. It, that's yes. the Paul Winch. Yes, he was a and very brilliant he, man. He was an inventor. Uh, yes, that's the artificial right. heart. He invented the artificial heart. Yes. Get out of here! That's incredible. A, I knew that. Did you, do, uh, Dan? Do you know his daughter, April Winchell? Uh, no, somebody out there knows April Winchell. April, somebody was saying. Yeah, April Winchell was um, the voice of the mom. 
character in uh, Roger Rabbit, in the opening cartoons ah. um, of Roger Rabbit. The, the mom is played by April Winchell. And uh, she's a very active voiceover uh, person working mm-hmm. here in L.A. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't pull pull. I, I can't believe I didn't realize who Paul Winchell was yeah. right off his because my daughter is a is a smir- I mean a, 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 a Winnie the Pooh oh. addict. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, oh addict. bother. Yeah, that would be the best way to describe. <laughs> but she also is an addict of, of the newer ones too, with Jim Cummings. Yes, well, Jim is very talented. He is. He's yeah. great. I actually was at. I helped. I helped him set up a little basic home oh, studio. You? Yeah. Yeah, for just the basics, because he doesn't do much work from home. Just get those auditions in, you know, so you have to drive into your agent, that kind of thing. Well, George yep. George did one for me. Uh, I live up in Camarillo in Ventura County, and uh, we call it the towel room. Uh, he came up with, he noticed that I had a lot of towels on the floor, and he just <laughs> started putting towels up on the wall. <laughs> and, say, and sure enough, for my voice... Uh, it works okay. It, it huh? just worked perfectly uh, for, for, for the timbre of my voice. I've been in a lot of closets. A yeah. lot of closets. <laughs> and I'm not rearranging clothing either, unless it's acoustically helpful. <laughs> you know, I did a wonderful record. Do you remember Red Engel? He was with... No. With... Uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm so I feel like I'm You're a, so he's a kid. Of, I'm a kid. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. See, uh, I'm sorry, but yeah. anyway, uh, he was uh, a comedian, and uh, he worked with um, what was it Jones, who was a funny Spike Jones, funny, huh? Spike Jones, Spike Jones. Oh, I know yeah. who Spike Jones is. Yeah. Well. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, he worked with Spike Jones. Oh. And I got a call from Red Engel. I had never met him before. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'd like you to make a record with me. Well, I was thrilled to death. <laughs> and so I got to uh, the home uh, from, uh, what was his name? Mm-hmm. Les Paul. Oh, Les Harry. Paul. Oh, oh, yeah. Ben and overdubbing. He had... Uh, he had a studio in his garage mm-hmm. on Curson Street. Mm-hmm. And I went there at a certain time and I looked at the script and I had to sing. It was, you know, the song, These Foolish Things. Okay, yeah. This was a takeoff that uh, <laughs> checkered pantsiers without no seat in them, <laughs> tumbleweeds that had no. Something, <laughs> but anyway, it was a Marjorie Main voice, you know, with a, a Western accent. There's a lot of things I like about you too that stuck in my heart, crossways. But it was it was a takeoff of, on these foolish things. Oh, okay. And, I love Spike Jones. Actually, I love my. I have to thank my dad for that. He he loves Spike Jones, and I listened. I had he had t- uh, cassette tape dubs of the yeah. records and. And as as just chance should have it, I just recently actually I'm in the midst of working with Spike Jones Jr. Really, his son who is getting into voiceover. I mean, who isn't? Right? He's doing I mean, a voiceover. He's getting into voiceover. I'm putting a speaking of closets. I'm putting a voiceover booth in a closet. You know, in his oh, in his condo. <laughs> but you know, when the first time I worked with him a few months ago, he you know I saw my the email come in Spike Jones, and I was like. I got on the phone with him. I said, "You're not the Spike Jones, son of the f- man on the Funny Records." Bub. He was like, "That's my dad." I'm like, "Oh, you know, it's rare oh. that I get like starstruck, you know." But I love Spike Jones. I wonder if he knew Red Engel. I'm sure he did. I'm he sure probably he did. knows the record I made. With <laughs> he probably does. Yeah. yeah, June. What one of the questions that a lot of people have been asking. Who would you like to work with? Who who do you really respect in the animation business mm. today that you'd you'd like to work with? Yeah. You mean the director or No other other voice actors. I love them all. Of course. <laughs> you know, really, it's um I can't enumerate them all, but yeah. they're they're all you know, we're we're family. I was talking to uh, Rachel about this. We're a small group of people, and we all love each other, and we all work together on the same things, and um, it's it's family, really. Oh, totally. 
Yeah. yeah. It's hard to single people out, isn't it? Because yeah. everybody you work with, you love working with them, and you'd always you'd want to work with any of them again. I'm sure. I know. Yeah. A, a very dear friend is Bob Bergen, yeah. and he does uh, Porky Pig. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. They're all so talented, everybody. Now. Bob's great. He's been on our show. I'm sure oh, he'll be on he? again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll have yeah. to call him when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> um, among the new group of people that I've been working with, yeah. um, Stephanie Reggio, mm -hmm. John yep. Taylor, mm -hmm. D.B. Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, John Thomas, uh, a group of uh, Piat Volchuk. Oh, yeah. Piat's wonderful. He's an amazing uh, performer. And I know I'll forget people too, but this younger group of people yeah. have come along that uh, I've put together as an ensemble that we work with on our projects. And uh, our very first recording session, June came to. Oh. And the proudest moment that I ever had was to hear her say, I see you learned the lessons I taught you. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, that's, passing the torch. Is, that is a, was the most amazing moment to me. Yeah, and the second one was we had uh, we did a promo with June performing mm -hmm. as a, gra a grandma bear, mm -hmm. and uh, the same type of thing happened where so June asked, "Do you want to do another take, or do you want anything different? How do you direct June Foray?" Right, right. <laughs> I couldn't. Good question. I couldn't. I couldn't possibly. I sat in the booth and said, June, don't worry, that's fine. <laughs> but the but the humility of asking yeah. and being asked was just an amazing moment. That's being a that's the professional yeah. it's always that the pro is always inside you. You always ask, you know, you it's always well, part the, of the, the nicest award I've ever gotten is a star of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That, oh man. I yeah. got that twelve years ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Do you yeah. remember what? Do you remember what part of it is? If I went to go find it, it's seven o eight o Hollywood Boulevard. Seven o eight o. Yeah, right, everybody. It's on the the south side, just east of La Brea. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I I have so many awards, which is very flattering, but there's. I don't have any more room on my. I was going to say, where do, you, where do you keep them all? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like wallpapered with I, stuff. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, June, you you've had such a, a fabulous and long career, and we know you, and you, and you're going to continue doing this. I think until you just feel like you can't talk anymore, and I think that's probably going to be <laughs> never. Uh, but what? And a lot of people have been asking this one. What What would you like your legacy to be with this business? Because you are. You are this business, as far as a lot of us are concerned. You're the, the mother of all of us for all this. But what would you like your legacy to be? How would you like to be everyone to remember you as, uh, in, in this business? As a kind, thoughtful person who helps other people and the environment. I, I just, I like simplicity. I am what I am. I'm very simple. Uh, all these laudatory things I've been listening to, it's almost embarrassing because I've just done what I could do and what I wanted to do. Mm. That's all I could ask for. <laughs> yeah, that's here, just acting naturally. Exactly. <laughs> Oh wow! Well, wow. I I don't know. On a high note, I mean, the, somebody said, "Are you aware of just how much of an icon that you are to many of us?" I mean, this audience that you're that you're you're speaking to, you don't see them, but I mean, this this is this is your this. Not only are these people your fans, but they're the people that want to be you. You know, right. and and this this it's part of a lexicon of voices that shape the imaginations. And the directions of so many people. I mean, it's yeah, just exactly. wonderful that you could be here to share yourself you, with us. You, you're one of the reasons I'm a voice actor. I mean, it's I, and there's I mean, there's thousands of people getting into this business. You know, these days, some people may not even remember or haven't even seen Bullwinkle, but to this generation, and I know a lot of people who are with us in the chat room and watch the show regularly. And we were discussing this the other night. You're the reason that people became voice voice actors. It was I, that yeah. it was that compelling 
and and that important to our lives that you know that we heard these voices and I could do that, you know, a lot try, you know. Well, but to- you know, animation is the nexus between fantasy and real life. Mm. Good point. And so it's wonderful working in this. I get fan mail from all over the world, from Singapore, Africa, India, Finland, Poland. I Every got one continent. From Poland. But see, it used to be they dub their they dub these in their own language. Mm. I know once when I was in Italy, they were showing the Smurfs, and I knew somebody at Rye Television. So I said, could I go in and, and watch the show because I'll get a residual. Right. It was in Italian. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but now, you see, most people all over the world speak English, so they hear me now, and that's right. why I get fan mail from all that's over nice. the world. Oh, it's wonderful. very flattering. Well, June, thank you for gracing our 50th episode. I mean, it's I mean, it's big enough that we've done it, but it was just so wonderful having you on tonight. I mean, this is we're a crowd of voice actors. So we take this, you know, as as a highlight, I think, of all of our careers to uh, to actually hear you speak and and tell us about your career and, you know, give us an idea of what it's like, you know, to be at the the epogee. Maybe that's not the right word to use. <laughs> to be at, at, at the, the apex, the apex. Of, 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 the, of this business. I know it was one of those A words in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks so much for coming, you know, you know, coming on to our show tonight. And uh, I know we want to have you on again because I'm sure you have even more stories to tell. Oh, I have a lot of them. I figured you did. Call Thank in, you, Call Dad. in any time, too. You can call in. Yeah. Uh, you know. Thank you for inviting me. It's very flattering. Thank you. George, I think I think we got more to do, but uh, I think we should say good night to to June because yeah. you know it's uh, I, it's a long time for you to be uh, talking. But then again, you've been talking all your life, so it's, it's ten fifteen where you live. Ah, it's just a shankety evening. Oh my <laughs> god! All she cares about is that it's time for you it's... to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my wife is saying the same thing. So, <laughs> thank you, Dad. Thank you. And Thanks thank for being you, on George. the show. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for making the trip out. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. (laughs) All righty. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. We've got a few more items to deal with, and uh, so we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Thanks again, June.
This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to Dan and George. Wow. Well, well, we're back here at East West Audio Body Shop. At least I think we are. Kind of blown away. Oh man, that was. Uh, I I don't think I'll ever live that one down. That was. She's an amazing lady, and and sharp as attack. Ninety four is she? I I didn't ask her age, but I believe she was born in nineteen seventeen. I would make it not. So, you know, yeah. you know how I am with math, but. <laughs> But anyway, that was something, you know, and yeah. I will never forget being able to do Bullwinkle with her, you know, and she just jumped right in. I'm, uh, how many times must people ask her to do that? You know, like, <laughs> hey, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. You but just that gotta, trick never works. Exactly. You just got to do it. <laughs> Shows you what a great lad liberal she is, but oh, she knew totally. she knew it was coming. She knew it was coming. She's a, the consummate pro. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I thought it was fascinating how she talked about how they don't improvise, you know, that they, yeah. they, the scripts, you know, they ain't what they used to be, right? But I mean, they used to be written with such precision, and everything was already there that needed to be there, and they literally stuck to the script, you yep. know. And, and they worked so much that they didn't. You, they rarely had a big gaff or, a, or they rarely had, you know, a, a, where they just lost control and laughter, you know, because they were just really worked together so much. They're pros. Well, and, and the key to a lot of great animation is, of course, the writing. If you ever watched SpongeBob, because I would mm. used to listen to SpongeBob, kids be walk, kids be watching it in the back seat, and I'm hearing all these episodes, and it's like a great radio play, great actors, great writing, and you know, and I never, you know, I never saw some of these episodes until I finally saw them. They weren't as funny as what I heard, you know, from the back seat. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, actually, no, they were. SpongeBob's one of my favorites. <laughs> anyway, a little bit of tech of the week. You were gonna briefly talk about this new lexicon thingamabobby oh yeah well you know this thing isn't even new it's a, to even call it new it's kind of a misnomer it's the the um bo weaver he's like our honorary uh our uh, geek in the field you know it's like he's out there trying new stuff and blowing money on gadgets so that you don't have to Right. And uh and and he he loves doing it. You know, he's like somebody asked him recently, "What is my hobby?" and he said testing uh, testing audio equipment. But uh we we've been looking for just the perfect simple audio interface with USB to plug into any, you know, computer, Mac or PC that would tie into in a studio. So if you have a mixer and the, all the other accoutrement, what would be the perfect tool? Well, you'd think this sounds so simple, right? You'd think it would be, you know, there's a million options and boxes and all that stuff well the thing is all of those gadgets all those different M interfaces they all have pretty much one thing in common is they all have microphone preamps on their two inputs you know input one and right. two left and right they all have uh, mic preamps and even though they can accept a line level input with a quarter inch jack you know your typical phono jack they're always passing signal through that preamp and, um, you know, you can monkey around with gain and pads and all this stuff to get it just right, but it's never just quite right. But so anyway, the, the, we found one recently that seems to have the right combination of price, quality, simplicity, all the, which it ticks off all the boxes and that's the lexicon alpha and mm -hmm. the lexicon alpha, it's been around a lot. I, I think it's been around for at least five years, but it's they just were one they, of those, they were around before actually a lot of these other manufacturers. Yeah, were it just them. it just didn't really get promoted very well by Lexicon for whatever reason. But uh, the Lexicon Alpha is about sixty bucks, and it sounds fantastic. It's got true balanced TRS line in and line out, and it also has one microphone preamp built into it, just for good measure. No phantom power, but it does have a preamp. But when you go into the line inputs, you're going actually into the line inputs. And uh, for the, what you're getting with balanced in and out and a USB headphone monitoring, if you want it, um, for 60 bucks with good quality, no low noise, you know, uh, you can't beat this thing. So if you're looking for something like that, if your inbox is getting tired, uh, you know, you're getting... Which is not hard. Yeah, they get tired. <laughs> if, if you're getting a lot of, like Dan explained, white <laughs> noise and inexplicable hiss and stuff... And maybe it's try, time to try something new. Give this thing a try. You might find yeah. out that for sixty dollars, you're like, "What? Why didn't I think of this thing before?" Maybe it's too cheap. Maybe that's you know why I never really gave it any respect. 
Yes. So. Well, Susan reminded us of, of something very important. Does Harlan carry this? Yeah. I don't think so. Does I don't Harlan think he has? Does. No, actually, he I don't think he does. But he carries everything else. Well, almost yeah, yeah, everything. Almost else. everything. He doesn't carry. He carries the right stuff. I'll tell you that. He does. He does. I mean, we've got, I mean, he's got, I mean, we talk about him all the time about the, the VO1A, which is actually a pretty great mic, you know, if we're, if we're doing voiceover, because that's what it's designed for. And of course the MicPort Pro, but this, the, the new Portabooth Pro, which, you know, the Portabooth Plus, yeah. which, which he, uh, he debuted here on our show a couple of weeks ago. That's a great little tool. I it's mean, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, they, a very good design. He's using actual Oralex in it today, and uh, and now it's uh, you know I th- I think that it's it's an, a really nice thing to have if you're on the road, uh, you know, especially with uh, you know what we were saying with the uh, the Epigee mic, or or with the VO one A because they've made it bigger so you can actually fit a bigger mic in there, right? And uh, so that's a, that's a great thing to have, and uh, you can get it at. His website, which is voiceoveressentials.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, we invite you to go over there and do your voiceover shopping there because he's got the best stuff. And you can, and if you go to either one of our websites, uh, either homestudiomaster.com or to uh, Studio Tech, why can I never remember your web address, George? <laughs> there, let's see. It starts with a V. Oh, uh, voiceover. Tech. 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 Yeah, yeah, com, right. tech. yeah. Click on the icons there and you can, you can get us there. Exactly. And, There's uh, a shot and, up on the screen right now. Of the port of, This is a brand new picture he just put up on his website of the Pro oh, yes. and the Plus side by side with Terry Lee. Yep. and uh showing off the the comparison comparing the size and and uh, i'll tell you guys if you've been on the fence about whether you really want to get one of these for working on the road and you thought the porter booth pro was maybe a little bit too big or too expensive try out the plus yep. you might be surprised because we certainly were so thanks harlan thank you harlan. You're- you are a godsend to us. You're the man. Yes. Somebody was asking, uh, how does the Lexicon Alpha compare to the Personas? Well, it depends on which Personas you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the USB audio box or the Firebox or one of those how guys. How does it compare? I mean, like I, like I was trying to How explain, does anything compare? Yeah. The, all those other things, the, the Lexicon audio box and, I'm sorry, the, the Personas audio box and the Mbox Mini and the Fast Track Pro and goes on and on they all have preamps and the signal even when you're using a line input is going through that preamp so all of those have that in common we Bo and i have been searching forever we love the uh, echo audio fire 2 which is a really great piece but it's 200 bucks and it's firewire only um so a lot of a lot of us with newer laptops or computers especially pcs firewire is going away so, yep. uh, you know, it's not a very universally acceptable uh, system to use anymore with FireWire. So this thing seems to seems to fit the bill. It does a nice job at it. We've tried a lot of other things. The problem is some of the nicer ones uh, that, that, that do come out, there's a USB version of the Echo Audio Fire coming out. They all have these really complex user interfaces in this console. So they have a virtual screen-based console that you have to use to do everything. And it's un- mind-numbingly complicated. And we don't need that. Not in a voiceover world where we're doing everything with a board and this, you know, we have right. everything in front of us. You just don't need to have that complex console. You know? and, and even, even Bo told me, he's like, I love this, this new gadget, but you know, I think he was trying the Echo Audio Fire 2 USB. But the console is mind-numbingly complicated. And this is coming from a guy who knows what he's talking about. He knows that's tech. true. So. Can you imagine? Have you ever been in his closet? He must have a pile of things sitting in his closet. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. There's a lot of stuff in there, man. I'm like, Bo, you ever want to have a, a virtual Bose Bose <laughs> virtual yard sale? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he 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 has a blast with it. I mean, it's it's what he loves to do. Every time I see him, we'll be out with our wives at some function, you know, and the second he walked, I just got to tell you, George, I'm trying out the new XYZ and it's just not quite right, you know, and our wives are standing there looking at each other. Yeah. <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> you just can't help it. Yeah. Well, I, let's see here. It's 1029 here in the yeah, East. And June, June we, wants me to go to bed. So. I think we had a show. I think we had it. That was a great show. You know, I mean, it was wonderful having June on, and uh, she was she was delightful. You know, and and I'll, I'll never forget that. And we're gonna have to have her on again sometime. I, I don't think she'll hesitate to be on. I don't. I think she had a good time. Yeah, no, I was amazed that 
this you know you 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 kind of think you know ah she's too big to want to do a show like this ah this ah that all these things that come through my my head when i'm going through my list my wish list you know of 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 guests and uh you know (laughs) it just blew my blew me away i mean it helped tremendously knowing rachel and bob because they 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 know june and and they both were were enthusiastic about her coming on they both knew that she'd like to do it and uh rachel was instrumental in her being here if rachel hadn't been so involved with uh, wanting to make it happen and getting her here and the logistics so thanks a lot i mean a lot of thanks goes to rachel ehrenberg for for not only driving her here but just getting her to to come on to the show yeah well that's 50 episodes next week the next 50 yeah well yeah the next next week we're not doing a show next we week. are taking off a week we need a week off yes we do because we got we have a lot of prep work to do for uh for cal i got we're heading out i'm heading out to california for voice 2012 and george and i are doing our our special uh presentation on processing demystified it's gonna be great it's gonna be fun we're you know we're, we're working on it it's gonna be you know other guys yeah we have this presentation they talk well we're gonna talk about law no, i'm sorry rob you know <laughs> <laughs> rob we love you yeah we love you rob uh and some of the we're gonna we're gonna put on a show for you guys that if you know if you're coming to voice 2012 and want to really learn some some basics and suddenly go oh that's what that's for eureka yeah. eureka we're gonna give you some real good visuals on what this stuff is about so yeah. uh, what's the we, latest we got, with wovo what's the latest with wovo we're gonna be opening up for applications very shortly from my understanding dash voices dot org, org. Right? that is correct and uh we're going to be taking applications we we're, we're we've we've been meeting talking about technical standards mm-hmm. and uh fascinating very subjective thing though because not everything's the same to everybody and uh we're it's, uh, yeah it's tough to narrow it down and try to you know try to be as unsubjective as possible where we need to be and uh this is quite a challenge everybody's taken on to to do this right because everybody that's involved wants to do it right hasn't really been done before so it's like you know, it's, it's starting a path mm-hmm. kind of kind of hard to do you got to hold the grass down yourself at first but exactly it's, it's, as george carlin used to say <laughs> anyway so we're not going to be on next week so uh you know you can watch look there's 50 up ep- well there's 49 episodes uh mm-hmm. sitting there mm-hmm. <laughs> sitting rubble. back on the <laughs> rubble rubble there's 49 episodes sitting it I know people who have started watching the show, and they have gone back and they've started going watching each show in order. Somebody did ask: Is re- episode number one available? And it 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 is. Uh, it is. On Ustream, it's in seven pieces because <laughs> it kept stopping in the middle of the show. The broadcast kept stopping and dropping, and um, uh, it's in it's in a long list of to dos to uh, cut it together glue it back together and then put it up on youtube so uh as soon as i get around to doing that i'll tell you guys <laughs> yeah well you, you got an extra week here so yeah, anyway yeah. maybe we'll get around but to it maybe maybe so we're not gonna be on next week but in two weeks two we're weeks. gonna be live from the don lafontaine voiceover lab that's right with hopefully a live audience weren't we gonna have a contest or something for I know, people there, to be there there was too much stuff going on today i know i bet we've lost a lot of people already in the chat room not a whole lot there if you guys there. are sticking around anybody wants to anybody who's in la or going to be in la early for voice and uh you'd like to come in for a live studio audience for our, our for our 51st episode at the don lafontaine voiceover lab uh just send us a message uh we'll well, how about we just take the first uh, 12 people? Because that'll hold 12 people comfortably. It's not very yeah. big. It's not big. but we'll, uh, we'll take the first 12 people that send us a message on our website. And uh, we'll give you the details. Once we get a name solidif- a list solidified, we'll let people know it's full. And uh, we'll get the list in there. Because so, it's, it's not a public building where you, you have to get on the list to, to get in the studio. But, uh, yeah, it'll Maybe. be a lot of fun. Then you got to find it once you're in there. Which is, finding it, <laughs> the best security is being hard to find, and that is definitely the case for that studio. <laughs> so it's, it's a labyrinth to get in there. Yeah. So go to e- but, send us an email on ewabs.com in the contact page, and uh, we'll put you on the be, list. And uh, that'll be June 10th, June and I 10th. guess we'll 
We'll be on at uh, six o'clock, so we'll probably gather there around five or so, and or probably earlier. Yeah, but. I'll be there a little earlier. We're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a live show, like uh, you know, with Dan and I in the same room, or I might be sitting on one side of the glass, Dan on the other. I haven't figured it out because I still have to run the thing, but uh, it's gonna be. Interesting. Yeah, you might want to. That's why we're taking an extra week. Here. Yeah, we need a little more time to prepare, but we're gonna right. have uh, some of the some of the folks who helped found the lab, some of the actors that have supported it. We're gonna have a representative from SAG After Union talk a little bit about that. It's gonna we're gonna cover a lot of different topics. Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the week following that, we're gonna be at Voice Twenty Twelve. We're gonna do the show from there. That's right. So that ought to be fun too. It'll yeah, be uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Ten thirty four here in the east. It's a new record. Hour and a half. Mm -hmm. We've we beat the hour and a half record. Wow. Well. <laughs> We wanted to give June as much time as she possibly we could possibly get with her, and yeah. uh, so I wanted to make sure that we we got her for the max amount of time. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so I, I I guess if you know if if you can do without us for a week, I'm sure you can. Okay. Uh, but. But uh, we'll be back in two weeks, and uh, we're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm, I always like being in the same studio with you. It's, it's a lot you know, I, I mean, but it, the funny thing is, is we've done so many shows, and and most of them, I'm here in Buffalo, and you're there in Santa Monica. Yeah. We get in the same room. It's the same thing. It's yeah. it's, it's, it's very just a interesting energy. It's it's more. It, there's something something about it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So we we we'd love to have you guys join us and really see what it's about. Uh, anyway, I'm Dan Leonard in the East, and I'm George Whittem in the West, and together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. So you have yourself a great couple of weeks, and we'll see you in California. Bye bye. Bye.